In the last video, we talked about a vertical dilation of trigonometric functions. And in this lesson, we're talking about horizontal dilation. So remember that the value of A creates a vertical dilation. Here we're looking at how the value of B affects the horizontal dilation. In sinusoidal functions, we say that the value of B affects the period of the function. So remember what the period of a function is. It's how long does the function take to repeat itself. And for sine and cosine functions, we've seen that the function repeats itself every 2 pi. So when we have a B value that is other than 1, we take the 2 pi and divide it by the absolute value of B in order to find the period of the new function. We also say that the uh, period, or the value of B, let me say, affects the frequency of the function. And the frequency is just the reciprocal of the period. And for example, we would say that the frequency of your typical standard sine or cosine function is that it occurs once, so 1 over, every 2 pi. So the frequency of your standard function is 1 over 2 pi. Um, and so when we find the period of a new function, we take its reciprocal to find the period of that function. The, ah, oh, goodness, sorry. The frequency of that new function. In example three, part A, we are graphing standard cosine function and we're also graphing a horizontally dilated uh, cosine function. So before we even set up our grid, for the graph, let's identify what the period of the new function is going to be because we might want to use that information to label our axes. The period of g of x is 2 pi over 1 half because the value of b in my g function is 1 half. And if you don't see that, please realize that x over 2 is equivalent to 1 half times x. So when I simplify this, I find that the period of my function is 4 pi. And since our unit circle goes from 0 to 2 pi, but now this graph is going to be going from 0 to 4 pi, I want my x-axis to reflect that. And so instead of making my x-axis accommodate only up to 2 pi, I want to make sure that my x-axis accommodates up to 4 pi. So this time it's going to be squeezed a little bit more. This is going to be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. And I'm not even going to worry about the left-hand side because the instructions specify to graph at least one period of each function on the same coordinate axes. And since we're just kind of getting our feet wet on these graphs, um, we're going to take it as little by little and uh, step by step as we can. So I'm going to make my 1 here and my negative 1 there. So in my standard cosine function, remember, it has a y-intercept of... 1, and x-intercepts at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and another maximum, again, at 2 pi. That's where the cycle repeats itself, which means I have my negative 1 minimum value down here. So here's 1 period of my standard cosine graph. Now what's going to happen, because the period of my g of x function is 4 pi, is this is going to be stretched out. So my cycle will start here still, but in the last, in the last graph, the standard graph, where it ended here at 2 pi, now it's going to end at 4 pi. And notice how halfway between the beginning of the function and the end of the function, I had my minimum at pi comma negative 1 here. 
that's going to go halfway between 0 and 4 pi. So halfway between 0 and 4 pi is 2 pi, so now my minimum is here. And then also notice how halfway between my minimum and my maximum, there's my x-intercepts. So that's here and here. And so now it's just a matter of connecting the dots. And there is one period of cosine of x over 2. Before I set up my axes for part 3b, I want to figure out what the period of my modified graph is going to be. g of x has period 2 pi over the absolute value of b, which is 3. So it has a period of 2 pi over 3. Since my graph is being broken down, or has a period of 2 pi over 3, I want to break my graph, my x-axis, down into sixths of pi. And if that's not clear to you now, hopefully once I graph both functions on the grid, it'll be clear to you why that facilitates the graph of our function. So here's 2 pi. Here's 1 pi. I'm going to make this 1 and this negative 1. So one period of my standard sine function starts at 0, 0, recycles itself at 2 pi, has a, an x-intercept at pi, reaches its maximum at pi over 2 and its minimum at 3 pi over 2. So here's our standard sine graph. And our g of x function has a period of 2 pi, which means it's starting at the same 0, 0 but it recycles itself way over here at 2 pi over 3. Uh, notice how in our standard function, halfway between our starting point and our recycle point, there's our other x-intercept. And halfway between our intercepts, we have our maximums and our minimums. So here and there. And we connect the dots. and there's our horizontally compressed g of x function. For part c, once again, before I do anything on my axes, I want to make sure I know how to break down my axes by identifying the period of the function. Period of g of x equals 2 pi over 1 fourth which equals 8 pi. So I'm going to make each box 1 pi. So here's 8 pi. Here's 1 pi. And 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to make this 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and this negative 1. So my standard sine function, uh, cosine function, excuse me, this is going to be really, really smushed. Because remember, the standard cosine function starts with the y-intercept of 1, has x-intercepts at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, recycles at 2 pi, and then remember, halfway between those x-intercepts is my minimum value. So here's my, it looks really smushed, but it's my standard function. It's just smushed so that I can have room for my horizontally expanded uh, g of x function, which, again, has the same starting point, a y-intercept of 1. It recycles itself after 8 pi. And halfway between those two values is my minimum, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Or here's 
my minimum value. Halfway between my minimums and maximums is where you see the x-intercepts. So here's our g of x. Last thing we're looking at in this lesson is taking a real-world situation and writing a sinusoidal function for it. So in this problem, we know that the frequency of a note is 524 hertz. So if the frequency is 524, then we know the period is 1 over 524. We also know that the period is found by taking 2 pi over b. And we need to know that b value so we know what to plug into our uh, sine of x equation. So we solve for b here. b is going to equal 1048 pi. <clears throat> We were told that the amplitude is 0 0.1, so A is 0 0.1, and so our, uh, our function is f of x equals A, which is 0 0.1, times the sine of 1048 pi x. 